Hello, this is John from Clock Repairs Merseyside. I just thought I'd do another short video. As you've seen in a previous uh, video uh, on YouTube, uh, this is my old Drummond lathe. Um, this is the one I use quite often, really, to do to do most things. Um, I have the, as I say, I can zoom in there, we have the quick change tool post there. I think that, as I said, was offer... Um, <sighs> A, a mifid a small mifid it's it's a it's a quick change tool post anyway i just modified it slightly attached it to to an existing post i had there it's uh, obviously belt driven like most of them are it's got a set of gears on the back there to sort of to slow it down and if we go down as we've done before we've got a gearbox now come over a little bit to the other bench now i bought myself a a small uh, Chinese lathe, micro lathe, uh, made by Sealy. Nothing particularly special. The handy thing about it, as you can see, is this uh, scroll chuck. Uh, so when we're polishing pivots uh, and doing various things, it's, it's a lot quicker for us. Uh, it's accurate enough for what we want, uh, but it's nothing like, obviously, a watchmaker's lathe, but it does have a bit more power. Also... I bought a quick change tool post for that as well. Uh, everything for them is 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 quite expensive, really. Um, I think Axminster Ax make them, uh, and as I say, the quite ex the bits are quite expensive. I mean, quite shocking sometimes uh, for what they are. There's the set of there's a chuck and there's there's a there's a rotating center and a dead center, and if we go down to here, there's the tailstock. Um, everything's pretty neat. Uh, the the good thing I find about it is you can actually get quite a bit of speed out of it. I th I think it'll do about. I think if we look there, uh, it it goes up to if we look there. Sorry, it goes up to three thousand eight hundred revs per minute, which is a good thing when you're using a uh, carbide tip tools. Um, and things like you know things like that you can actually get that speed and you can sort of pretty much cut uh, you know most most types of metal with it um, as I say we're only really dealing in brass and sort of steel um, maybe I think the hardest thing I'll probably deal with is probably tool steel really um, that's 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 where I'm at um, the only the, the thing obviously about a small lathe is um, you can you can only take very 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 shallow cuts i mean you know you you're not even you're probably looking at a millimeter maximum on it so if you want to sort of turn something down and make some chips with a few things probably this you know you need to start off as near to the diameter as it was as that you you know that you need really rather than rely on uh, just keep cutting a bit down because it's going to take you forever uh, which you know is not really good. As I say, we do. It, it's very very handy for, for us just to do the little minor jobs like polishing polishing pivots, you know, making making a couple of bushes and things like that. It's really handy for that. If you need anything a bit bigger, obviously we go over to our man, the Drummond over there, uh, which is fairly capable. Although I would still say it's on on the lines of obviously a small lathe, model maker's lathe. So you know you you can't go too 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 far with it. Um, it's got that three inch chuck um, it has got a four jaw chuck for it but being honest with you it, it's there's something wrong with it it's very stiff it's 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 probably the same age as the lathe I mean the lathe was built around about 1906 so it's it's probably um, you know f f needs needs thrown away and, and, and needs replacing or something I mean I don't know but we I, I've never had any I've never had any reason to use it I also have a set of collets for it now I got it uh, an ER set of collets for it um, and I made you know with the draw but a six mil draw bar made the collar to go into the back and, and and that if we need a lot more if we need accuracy that's it but again I mean we, we're okay I mean the, the other watchmakers laid as, as I think, think you've probably seen it that um that had the collet set and that was for more precise work but the thing was it was it was pedal operated uh, you know and you know never had a, a cross slide or so it was all pretty much uh, using scribes and stuff that type of work watchmaking work really it's nice to do it's lovely and soothing to sit there doing that type of work but 
really, you know, we have to, we have to do very little of that where clocks are concerned. Pan around the workshop. It's pretty, um, pretty empty at the minute. Pretty empty at the minute. The other workshop's pretty full, but it's pretty empty. And we come back round to here. We have our uh, drill press. That's a Schublin drill press. Uh, quite a quite a, uh, a nice piece of kit. That very very precise. Uh, use that quite often in the other workshop. I have a mill. It's obviously you can use that as a you put a put a uh, chuck in that, and you can use that as a as a, as a as a drill press. Uh, that's pretty accurate. Um, no problem with that for bigger stuff. But again, we don't really deal with bigger stuff very often. It's it's it is mainly uh, clockwork literally. Uh, and there's our our so our press um only a small thing probably about 70 quid maybe maybe less on on the likes of amazon um that that gets used well gets used for a for all manner of um anything really that we need pressing uh you know we can use it to press uh, springs back in cylinders if we come over to the bench there you'll see um just angle this down you see there's a, um, a clock in pieces uh, ready to have some work done on it we've completely stripped it down taken the springs out the cylinders um, I'm going to check them out and then probably if they're okay may wind them back usually though I probably off for putting new springs in cylinders to be honest with you uh, it, it just saves any messing about at the end of the day and you know the job's done then uh, it's it's it didn't, they're not massively expensive and you know it's not a lot of time really once you pop the old cylinders out but yeah uh, there's the two plates off it there they'll be getting cleaned but yeah that's pretty much I just thought I'd uh, short video on my workshop uh, this is the one where most things happen the other workshops mainly for for testing stuff just getting used to this gimbal seeing what it's like trying to keep me, me videos more smoother but yeah anyway hope that was enjoyable to a few people uh if it if it was please subscribe i'm hopefully going to put many more videos on going to be mainly about clocks though it's it, you know gonna i'm gonna sort of as i've said in the past i'm gonna get a few get get a few different clocks and i'm gonna uh film them and i'm gonna so, give people a bit of a history and a bit of a rundown of certain things on them as anything special on one thing or another. So if you like my videos, please subscribe uh, and maybe let me know in comments anything you, you fancy me looking at or discussing. I certainly don't mind. Anyway, this is John from Clock Repairs Merseyside. Have a great day. Thanks.